looks like we're having trouble with the prelude, so we're going to start with the hymn. Thank you, Marge. Okay. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, oh, fix me on it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I find my greatest treasure, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the good I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Prayer of Confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Greta, I think you're Greta, still you're muted. muted. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in, okay. A first reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, 
and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you might you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves us all. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner, and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, there is healing in his blood. There is no place where our sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where our feelings have such kindly judgment given. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all in the sorrows of the hand. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, 
so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My Auntie Marion grew up in a sweet shop. Over here you call it a candy store, but somehow sweet shop has another layer of meaning. It was a tiny place in the middle of town, but step inside and it was magic. Rows and rows of glass jars full of sherbet lemons, rosebuds, Turkish delight. You asked for a quarter of lemon bonbons and they were weighed out with a shiny scoop onto a balance scale. Can you imagine what it must have been like to grow up in a sweet shop? When I visited, I was able to choose something for free. I couldn't imagine that heaven could be any more perfect than this place. And I thought of this as I read that reading from Isaiah and the Psalm for today. You that have no money, come and eat. Delight yourselves in rich food. God opens wide his hand and satisfies the needs of every living creature. We also read, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which doesn't satisfy? And I'm always hearing that we crave sweets, but they don't satisfy us. They just make us crave more sugar. This week, our readings are about abundance, but maybe not the abundance of a free reign in a sweet shop, an abundance that does satisfy us deeply. I'm, go I'm going to give you a homework assignment. I'm suggesting you take some time later today to sit down with our gospel reading for today and read it through once or twice slowly and see which part of the story resonates with you. I think there's somebody that needs to mute themselves because I can hear pages turning and clicking. So choose the gospel reading for today, read it through slowly and see what part of the story resonates with you, where Christ might be talking with you today. And our reading is from Matthew 14, 13 to 21. Jesus has just heard the news that John the Baptist has been beheaded. There are indications that Jesus was a follower of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a leader he had counted on, a prophetic voice, a voice of truth. And then he was brutally murdered for speaking out. That must have hit Jesus hard. And that must have been why Jesus had to get away. Is that where you are with Jesus as he tries to find a peaceful place so he could deal with his anger, his sadness, his sense of loss? Or are you with the crowds so hungry for Jesus' message that they followed him on foot into the middle of nowhere? Life was oppressive for many in those days.
It looks like Sally's screen froze. Um, should I continue with the Nicene Creed or should I try to let her figure out to, to finish the homily? Okay. Um, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. I'm back. Through him all things were made. I'm For back. Us, I'm sorry. Oh, there's, there's oh, my Kyra. I had to fix the network. And I'm not sure where I left you all. Um, I'm going to read the last couple of lines that I read that I had written, though I'm not sure where I left you. Okay. So I was talking about whether you, you're with the crowds that were hungry for Jesus' message because they followed him on foot into the middle of nowhere. And life was oppressive for many in those days. People needed hope. Some were hungry, some were sick or lonely or spiritually or emotionally troubled. We're just wanting to hear some good news. And I was talking about how in our world it's hard to find good news nowadays. We're all hungering for that. So did you resonate with those who were wandering in the, in the, out to the wilderness just to hear something better? Or are you with Jesus as he had compassion for all of those needy people? He was facing a sea of faces. How on earth could he help them all? Just being aware of their needs can be such an emotional drain. Don't we sometimes feel that with so many needs in the world, where on earth can you begin? It's overwhelming. Or are you with the disciples trying to get things organized? Maybe concerned for Jesus, who was probably exhausted, wanting to get the crowds back home safely, a little afraid maybe, such a large crowd in the middle of nowhere. When they realize they have no food, might they get agitated or violent and turn against Jesus and the disciples? Who knows what might happen when thousands of people gather together, especially when the needs are so great? Is that what resonates? Fear for what's happening in society in a time of great anxiety and overwhelming needs. Or are you with the crowds watching Jesus as he took the bread and the fish and blessed them and broke the bread? and gave it to the disciples, who gave it to the people. Maybe you're there thinking, wow, that's communion. I miss that. Just being together with others, sharing a meal would be so wonderful. And oh, to be there with Jesus, watching him bless and share. A real holy moment. Or are you there after that miraculous meal when all had eaten and were filled? and how good that must have felt. For that moment, all their needs were satisfied. What had gone before was gone. What was to come was in the future. But for that moment, miraculously, they didn't want for anything. Maybe that's the feeling that resonated with you. So just relax into that and enjoy that moment. Or are you there when they gathered up the 12 baskets of broken pieces? Were you thinking, where did they all come from? Where are all the broken pieces in our community, in the world? What are the broken pieces in your life? All those pieces are being gathered up. They're being taken care of. Jesus doesn't forget or throw away any of them. So just sit with those images. This familiar story is so full of images. What resonates with you today? Our Old Testament reading and the Psalm for today both talk about food and being satisfied, but the food in that gospel story is not what you'd call a feast. It's nowhere near enough to feed 5,000 people plus women and children. It's probably only enough to feed one or two people. Yet, in God's hands, it turns into an abundance. So what jumped out at me is that when God's involved, it doesn't take much. Never say you're too old or too young 
or too weak, or you're not smart enough, or not outgoing enough, or you're not educated enough, or you're not in the right place. It's not the right time. Don't say, I don't have enough time. Don't say, I don't have anything to say. Don't say, I'm not good at anything. God takes what we have, however unlikely it may seem that it could possibly be enough for anything that God would want to do. Yet miraculously, once we give it to God, God takes it, blesses it, and distributes it where God needs it to go. And it comes back multiplied. So whatever you have to offer today, all your fears, your insecurities, all your doubts, your weaknesses, or just a couple minutes of your time, Jesus said, bring them here to me and see what God can do with them. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for all our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Vivian, you're muted. Yes. The prayers of the people. I'm not on the reading list. I don't Father, have the prayers. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for Kelly and for all who are looking to have surgery in the next few days. I ask your prayers for those who have died, especially those who died in our community, in Summit County, and especially for the victims of violent violence and have died of the violent death. and especially for the children who have died recently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, share our lives and help to heal our neighbors, tell the good news, seek justice and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing, fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through the wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for thy gospel's joyful sound. May the gift of thy salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful to thy truth may we be found so that when thy love shall call us savior from the world away fear of death shall not appall us glad thy summons to May we ever, may we ever reign with thee in endless day. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, this is St. John's Episcopal Church in Cuyahoga Falls, worshiping at home. Thank you for joining us this morning and have a very blessed week. Well done. <laughs> Sydney, I wish we could hear your prelude. <laughs> I know. Yeah, technical difficulties this morning. Now I have a blank screen, so I don't know what's going on. Well, well we can hear you. Good. I can 